Although these expressions that I covered right now with those examples are good on their own, I usually use them for character animation as well. So I'm going to give some examples here that I usually use those types of expressions to speed up the process of animating these characters, especially in cases that I'm dealing with lots of details on my characters and I don't want to spend too much time on animating each one of those details. I'm going to show you how I take care of animating the hair, the ribbons, introducing some second reactions on the side hairs, even some smooth animations on these sleeves without dealing with key frames whatsoever so uh, it's time to animate this character usually when i want to animate a rig that i've created inside after effects for every single shot of my animation i make a duplication of my original rig because i don't want to mess up with my rig and i don't want to animate things in the rig composition and then delete those for the next shot so usually what you will do is you will actually duplicate that rig and then you will name this for example shot one and then you start animating your character inside that shot zero one is identical to my rig composition with all the layers and controllers i can start animating these controllers here without messing up with my original rig composition also if i want to start building up some background layers or anything else for this character what i will do is i will say this is my rig made for shot one and then I will drop it into a new composition and I will name that composition shot one. Inside that I have a composition called shot one for my character rig. I'm going to, for example, bring in the background that I had for my character and I'm going to drop it into my new composition that is made for shot one. I'm going to close the rest of these compositions here very well. What I'm focusing on here is just the use of expressions for this given character. I'm going to start with, for example, these side hairs and show you how we can introduce those kind of second reactions or overlapping actions on the side hair here. So for that reason, I'm going to start animating the head first. So I'm going to have the character to look forward by rotating the head forward, maintain that position for a while, and then look up again. And then I'm going to have her to go back to the default rotation value of zero. I'm going to ease these keyframes. And now I want the side hair to follow the same rotation with a delay on it to create that kind of second reaction on it. I'm going to find the pins for the side hair. I'm going to open up the rotation, read the rotation of the head with a delay using value at time. And I'm going to introduce a delay of, for example, 0.1 second. Since I'm also having a middle pin for this as well, I'm going to do the same thing for this. This is a typical FK chain. So with this one, I'm going to read the rotation of the first pin with a delay of 0.1 second. Now let's see the result. You can see that the hair is following that and it's having some delay on it too. I'm going to read the rotation of these pins as well in case I want to animate them. So I'm going to link back to the rotations and add it to my expression. And now I'm able to animate these ones individually as well. The other thing that I usually do also for my expressions is that sometimes I get some uh, extreme results. For example, in this case, since the head is having more freedom compared to the side hair, I'm going to introduce a constant value and multiply it by that. For example, I want to reduce that by 20%. So I'm going to multiply that rotation by 0.2 now you can see that the rotation of the head is transferred to the side hair by a factor of 20 percent so it's not that extreme and that factor will propagate through the entire chain just because now this pin 2 is also reading a lower value that is coming from the pin 1. i also can make a slider on it and i'm going to name this auto rotation and i'm going to read this one in my expression so rather than multiplying it by a fixed value of 0.2 i'm going to read this new slider on it and now if the auto rotation is set to zero i'm not getting that second reaction whatsoever on it which is useful and then if i want to get that back in i can actually introduce that one so for example i can say i want to have some second reaction between these two actions here so i'm going to gradually increase this so i will say for example a factor of 30% I want to maintain that auto rotation on it and then when I'm happy with the result probably I can have it settle down so I'm going to set a keyframe here and gradually reduce it back to zero so this way it's only being affected by the expression in a portion of my composition I'm going to make this a little bit more gradual and you can see that when the head is rotating forward, I no longer get that second reaction just because the auto rotation value is set to zero, which is a perfect way to be able to have full control over the expressions in case they are acting crazy. Let's do another thing while we are here. If you remember when I set up the eyes, I had two layers for the eye itself, not the pupil. 
the eye itself that is visible and I'm having a mat that is actually acting as the white part of the eye and the way the drawing replacements are set up for this eye is that if I want to pick the drawing number two I need to also change the eye mat to drawing number two as well so this is a perfect place that I can use a direct connection between these two attributes I can actually read the time remap for one of them and drop it onto the other one so I'm going to create an expression here and drive it from the time remap from the other eye so this way if I change these two layers I'm sure that the drawing replacement for the other one is also updated and I no longer need to animate both of them individually I no longer need to see this layer in my timeline so I can shy it I can even lock it as well So uh, I took care of these two. I'm going to go back and uh, probably remove the animation on the head for now. And let's now practice the wiggle and sign function on multiple places. So the first thing that I want to try is setting up the hair that is made out of three different layers for each one of the strands. And I have placed pins for each one of the strands, if you remember. So I'm going to focus on one of them for now. This is the hair A. And I'm going to build the simple FK hierarchy on these pins. And what I'm trying to create is a back and forth kind of windy effect on these hairs. So I feel like a sign function would be a perfect place to practice on this setup. So I'm going to open up the rotation on the first pin of the hair. And since I know that eventually I want to control the amplitude, frequency, as well as the delay for this entire chain, I'm going to start building the sliders for it immediately as well. One for the amplitude, one for frequency. For delay, I'm going to name this offset. Let's build the sign function on this rotation math sign over time and we are going to include the amplitude and frequency here. Amplitude multiplied by the entire expression, time is multiplied by the frequency and eventually I'm going to introduce the delay as I go through the chain here. Usually in FK setups, the last pin in our setup is not used for animation because it's not doing anything. So for that reason, I usually hide them and even shy them so I no longer see them in my timeline. Let's move on to the next three layers. I'm going to follow the same process that I covered. Since I want to also maintain the manual control over these rotations, I'm going to keep the original rotation of these layers. Plus, I'm going to read the rotation of the base, giving it a delay. I'm going to introduce that offset between them and read the current rotation here just in case I want to manually animate them too. I'm going to also remove the layer name. So I'm going to replace it with index plus one. I want to copy and paste this expression for the rest of them. All right, let's test it out before I move on to the next hair strands. I'm going to introduce some rotational amplitude plus some frequency and also some offset. And let's see if it's working. Looks great. So I'm going to reduce the amplitude to something lower and frequency is good enough and the offset is also good enough. Perfect. So let's set it back to zero and move on to the next two chains here. I believe the expressions are going to be almost similar. So I'm going to first create the same sliders on the base pin of the second strand. So I can actually copy these and paste them on the next base controller. I believe I can borrow the expression as well. So I'm going to open up the expression on the rotation, copy it and go back to my second base and recreate that expression and just do some minor changes here. The effects are valid here. They exist. The frequency exists. Time and everything are looking good. For the next ones, I'm going to borrow the expression from the next pin here and see if I need to change any of those attribute names. Paste the expression. This is correct this is correct i'm looking at the correct layer here the only thing that i need to change is the delay slider that is now found on this new layer so i'm going to replace this delay by the new delay so now i can copy this expression and paste it on the rest of them and again the last pin doesn't do anything so shy and lock and hide and everything doing the same thing for the last base pins and for the next pins i'm going to copy this expressions and this time I'm going to read the delay from this new slider. So it seems that I've hidden the drawing layers themselves. I'm going to turn them back on. It seems that my hierarchy is still missing here. So now I can build the hierarchy on them. 
So now I'm having three pins. Each one of them have sliders on them, so I can have different offsets, different amplitudes, different delays for each one of these hair strands. So for example, the base one, I like the result. The second one, I'm going to give it some variation in the frequency so they won't do the same exact movement. And I'm going to change the amplitude of them as well. So for example, five degrees, and let's bring the amplitude on the first one as well, three degrees. And for the last one, I'm going to change the frequency to something different to have some different variations on them all right now let's test the result i believe the amplitude is too much i'm going to reduce that so three degrees for one of them maybe four degrees for this one and i'm going to play with the delay for one of them as well just to see if it's affecting the behavior of them or not let's see it in the composition all right, so we are getting this procedural animation on the hair pieces. And we know that we can always change those values later on. Let's do the same thing on these ribbons here as well. I'm going to dive into these hair ribbons and I'm going to do the same thing on them. The first ribbon doesn't have any pins on it, so I can actually create just one simple sign function on it. So I'm going to borrow some of these sliders and expressions from this composition as well. I'm going to paste them on the first ribbon and I'm going to rotate their layer directly here. So I need to make sure that the anchor point is on the base. So I'm going to create an expression and I'm going to respect the current rotation and then read the amplitude multiplied by math sign and we need to read the frequency multiplied by time and for the first pin we do not have a delay for the next base pin I'm going to borrow these sliders the reason why I'm not connecting all of these sign functions to only one slider is that I want to have individual control over each one of these layers so different frequencies and different amplitudes so this is good and we are here dealing with only one pin so i'm going to keep the current rotation read the rotation of the other one value at time time minus delay and the delay is found on the base pin i didn't change the layer name to index plus one because i'm only dealing with one layer and i'm not going to copy this expression for the rest of them so the last pin is going to be hidden and shy and let's do the same thing for this base pin here Still forgetting to fix the hierarchy. Here we go. And let's introduce some amplitudes. Like that. All right. So I'm going to change the frequencies so they don't move again together. Let's go back to our original composition and see if they're looking natural. going to save and move on to the sleeves for the sleeves let's just practice something else i'm going to create some random movement on them so rather than using sign function i'm going to create a wiggle expression on them so let's start with the left sleeve the pins are still here let's create the sliders first on it since this is going to be a wiggle the name of the sliders can be similar to what we originally had for the sign function so i'm going to borrow these sliders i'm going to go back to the base pin here for the sleeve paste the sliders create an expression on the rotation this time using wiggle and for the wiggle i'm going to have the frequency first wiggle with this frequency and with this amplitude and for the next pins I'm going to read the rotation of the previous pin with a delay. And the delay is created on the first pin. Removing the name of the layer and replacing it with index plus one. So now I can copy this expression and paste it on the next pin here as well. I'm going to define some amplitude and also frequency and then offset. Let's test it out and see if you like the result. The randomness looks nice, but it's a little bit too fast. So I'm going to reduce the frequency here to something smaller. Let's do the same thing on the other sleeve. Okay. 
So now let's test it out. Since I'm using Wiggle, Wiggle comes with a random curve for every given layer that it's sitting on. So I'm not worried that I'm using the same Wiggle pattern for both of these two sleeves, which is perfect in this case because I want to get different results for each one of the sleeves. So one thing that I want to add to this setup is to make it a little bit simpler and also user friendly in terms of animation. Currently, since I'm having compositions for, for example, the hair or the hair ribbons, if I want to modify their actions, I need to dive into those compositions and change the values, get out of the composition and test the results. It's functional. However, since I want to be able to quickly test different actions for the hair or the hair ribbons in this case, I want to get access to those sliders outside this composition. So rather than diving into this composition, I want to be able to modify those values directly on this composition or even on a controller that I might want to create for this given composition. So let's dive into this composition and see how many sliders we are dealing with in this composition. For each one of the strands, we are having three custom sliders. So in total, this composition is being controlled by nine different sliders. If I want to control all of these in one place, I need to create nine sliders and then I will connect those sliders to each one of these sliders that I have in this composition. So in this case, I'm going to build nine sliders directly on this hair composition here. Since I'm now dealing with multiple hair strands, I'm going to name them after each one of them. Hair A, Amplitude, Hair A, Frequency, and Hair A, Offset. And then I'm going to duplicate them and I'm going to name them after Hair B and duplicate it one more time. And this is responsible for Hair C nine sliders and I want to connect all of these to the sliders that I have inside this composition. So in order to do that, I need to see both of these two compositions at the same time. The trick here is that I need to have two timelines to be able to see both of them at the same time. So I'm going to drag this composition and I'm going to drop it here. And now I'm getting two timelines. One is showing me the composition of hair tail and the other one is showing me my main composition. So now I can make a connection between each one of these sliders from those sliders that I just created on the main composition. This is hair A. I have three sliders on it. So I'm going to open them up, amplitude, frequency, and offset. And I'm going to go back to my main comp. I'm going to lock it so I won't lose it. And then inside here, I'm going to write expressions and connect them directly to those sliders. So this is hair A amplitude hair a amplitude and now you can see that it's looking not at this comp but rather at a comp that is called lily shot one so this is the way you can read this so i'm going to do the same thing for the frequency and lastly for the offset now i'm going to do the same thing for hair b and lastly hair c So now we can close this entire timeline and we can get out of that composition. Now I have sliders for each one of these hair strands that I can directly change them inside this composition. So hair A, for example, amplitude of 3, a frequency of let's say 1, delay of 0.1 second for the other strands as well, 2 for the frequency, even 7 degrees, a delay of 0.15 seconds, 6 degrees, frequency of 1.5, and 0.12 seconds for the delay. So I can do the same thing for the ribbons, but since the concept is the same, I'm going to just move on. I want to also add one more thing to this setup just to make sure that you understand that you can add multiple types of expressions together. For example, in this case that I want to have the procedural animation, the sign function driving the hair strands, as well as if I want them to also have a second reaction coming from the animation on the head. So what I'm trying to do is I want to read the rotation of this head controller and I want this to be fed into the rotation of the pins of these hairs to be able to get that kind of second reaction on the hair as well. In order to do this, since my head controller is outside my hair tail composition, I need to again split my timeline into two timelines so I can see both of these two compositions at the same time. This is my main comp and this is my hair tail comp. I want to have the first pin of my hair to get some rotation from the head controller. I'm going to bring up the rotation expression of just the base pin because the rest of the pins are following whatever the base pin is doing. And then I'm going to read the rotation of the head 
head controller that is outside that composition it's right here this is the rotation of the head controller and we want to read this rotation in our composition with a delay to create that second reaction on it I'm going to go to my expression and on top of whatever I have in terms of sine function, I'm going to read the rotation of the head controller, give it a delay of, for example, 0.1 second. And now it's going to read the rotation of the head controller as well. And it's going to be propagated through the entire chain of the hierarchy. The only thing that I want to add to this is similar to what I did previously. I'm going to add a slider for only this expression. And then I'm going to leave it available in case I want to shut this second reaction off from the hair controllers. I'm going to go back to my main comp on the hair tail composition i'm going to build probably one more slider here to allow me to be able to actually shut off the entire secondary motion on the hair tails so i'm going to name this secondary action multiplier something that is a little bit more understandable so I'm going to use this multiplier in my composition only to be multiplied by the rotation of the head that I'm bringing into this composition. So I'm going to multiply it to the portion of my expression that is reading the rotation of the head controller. And I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of the expressions as well. So I'm going to copy this last portion of it, including the plus sign, bring up the rotation of the next pin and paste it there. I could have made three individual sliders for each one of the strands, but I figured that probably in this case one is enough because if I want to shut it off, I will need to shut it off for all of them. Now let's go back into our main comp. Let's do some basic animation on the head again. I'm going to ease these keyframes. And then I'm going to introduce that secondary motion on it. Let's say we want to have 50% of the rotation coming from the head. And you can see that the hair is doing almost the same rotation as the head is rotating backward or forward. This way we are introducing that secondary motion on the hair as well, while it's actually influenced by the sine function too. Each one of these two expressions are having their own multiplier, meaning that I can shut off the sine function, I can shut off the auto rotation on them. So this is the beauty of splitting the expressions and having individual sliders for each one of them. Just to make it a little bit more exaggerated, I'm going to go here and change the influence of the secondary motion to be fully 100% effective. So now you can see it even more and you can see that it's reacting to the motion of the head. Keep in mind that these sliders are still animatable, meaning that if I do want to get that second reaction for a portion of my composition and then I want to shut it off, I can simply keyframe it. So I can set a keyframe here. I can shut it off gradually so it doesn't look like that it's shut off very abruptly. And I'm going to ease it as well. Probably 100% influence is too much, so I'm going to reduce that value to 60%, 0 0.6. And now let's test it out. All right, so this is actually how we can use those expressions for character animation. And this wraps up the whole concept of using expressions for animation purposes.